This is Adrian Cronauer, the guy Robin Williams played on the movie Good Morning Vietnam. I just want you to know I always tune in to the News Guardian right here on Fox Radio 910. In 1972, a crack commando unit was sent to prison by a military court for a crime they didn't commit. These men promptly escaped from a maximum security stockade to the Los Angeles underground. Today, still wanted by the government, they survive as soldiers of fortune. If you have a problem, if no one else can help, and if you can find them, maybe you can hire the A-Team. I love that music. I know. We all know. I came to work feeling pretty um, pretty irritated and agitated this morning. All of a sudden, I'm feeling better. Well, that's good. I'm glad to know that the, the cheesy theme from a 70s, early 80s uh, TV show can make you feel better. Well, me too. <laughs> I know. It sinks a little. It's uh, you're easy to please. I wouldn't say that. Well, when it comes to political stuff, you're not easy to please. When it comes to political stuff, I am the easiest to please. <laughs> well, it, you're easy to please going on the assumption that people follow their constitutional uh, duties, which isn't what happens in politics today. Nope. It's just not what happens. It's not the way it's done on either side of the political aisle. I had an interesting conversation with somebody at church yesterday because people sometimes know that I'm involved in politics in some way or shape or form. And I had like three people approach me about impeachment church really? yesterday. Well, because it's been talked about a lot, but yes. not in a positive sense. But what did this person have to say? Uh, well, all three different people basically said, well, why are we, oh, we just impeached the president. It's about time we impeached the president. So it seems that the, the, the rank and file kind of semi- interested political observers have gotten to a point now where they're getting mad at the Republicans for not doing more to stick it to the president for violating his constitutional oath. Well, it's about time. I mean, they had an interview on that with uh, with Congressman Bob Goodlatte this morning, and his answer was basically... No, 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 no. <laughs> no. He, now, in, in, in the same breath where, where, where Goodlatte says that the president hasn't, you know, committed any crimes or misdemeanors or broken the law that, that would require uh, uh, impeachment, but they're going to go sue him because he's broken the law. So how does I, that? How, how do you? How does that logic exactly work? Because that? Because you know the the conversation piece in all three conversations I had at church on Sunday, all came back to Boehner suing the president, and all of them thought that was the dumbest idea in the history of mankind. And now one person. These are these aren't people who are all hyped on politics. These are just people who casually follow politics. They all thought it was stupid too. And so then they're not listeners. So these weren't people that we have no. could, we have propagandized ourselves. As far as I know, they're not consistent they, listeners. They came to this on their own. Yes. Well, so I thought it's kind of interesting that uh, I mean that, that this is very anecdotal, and maybe Bob's political people are smarter and they can fool enough people to to keep. Uh, he doesn't have to fool anybody. He's just going to win. I mean, he, he's not going to lose in November. Well, that's true. Well, he can say and do whatever he wants for the next four months. I'm sure your friend uh, that uh, comes in on Libertarian Wednesday, Melissa, would disagree with your assessment of the political I don't, chances. I don't think they think Bob's not going to win either. I mean, not going to come out a minute. Come on now. I mean, they're not going to stop him from trying, and I don't want them to stop trying. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they should just give up. I think they should they should fight with their very last breath. But ultimately. It's not likely that Bob's going to lose in November. I mean, that, it, this is true. That it, it would take it would take a complete, you know, rearrangement of reality for that not to happen. But that said, again, I don't think that that Melissa and her libertarian people, and I don't think they should stop fighting to try to win that election just because they're not going to win. Well, maybe we're wrong. Maybe the winds are changing. But they need to get ten percent. They need to get 10% so that they can even the ballot access, unless their lawsuit is going to give them the ballot access that they've been fighting for. I mean, one way or another, we, the elections have got to be fair, they've got to be accurate, and they have to be trusted. And right now, we don't have either three of those things in our, in our electoral process. It's just a fact. Um, interesting topic. We have a theme for today. 
What's the theme for today, the Greg? Theme for, the theme for the day is the is that is that the the media is 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 obviously completely lying to us. <laughs> That's a shocker. We never talk about that. Yes, but not in the way you think. It's a completely different animal today. Um, reality being the exact opposite of what's being portrayed. Yeah, I mean, that's the norm. I get that. But it's completely different today. I mean, for example, they're reporting that uh, a woman was injured while riding uh, a jet ski up at Smith Mountain Lake over the weekend. And not true. I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you why. Um, that's reported by the Runnick Times. Um, they're reporting that... Um, Oh, they're reporting that the arming, you know, putting armed guards on boats that are going around Africa have uh, have stopped the Somali pirates basically in their tracks from from taking hostages and, and stealing boats, which is not true. It can't be true. These things can't be true. Um, Reuters is reporting that Obama visited the the border, which can't can't be true either. Um, the, it's just there's some amazing things being reported that no matter how factual they are are not true. They cannot be true, and we're gonna we're gonna tell you why. Um, but before we do that, we, we've got to we've got to let people know something extremely important. What's that? We have to let them know the seven things you can buy with food stamps. <laughs> well. Uh, or should we it, save that till the end? Is, is that is that a is that a good wrapping up the show good, story? That's a pretty good list because you know, being I think most people have this notion that not only is it only for food, but it's only for certain kinds of food. You know, like essentials, like you know, meat, potatoes, bread, carrots. Yeah, yeah, sort of stuff that you have to milk. Have. Yeah, milk, butter. You no, know. no, it's it's uh, it's amazing, you, and and if you stick around, we'll get to it. You can even buy drugs. You'll even be able to buy drugs with your with your food stamps. Wow! Seriously. Well, that's uh, that's exciting. They are they are they are making dependency on government look better to me every day. It's beautiful. Man. I'm sure <laughs> glad to know my tax dollars are being used so, uh, you so, f yeah, they're so efficient in getting my tax dollars to be, I mean, you wouldn't want them to, you wouldn't want them to not open up opportunities for the tax dollars to be spent wisely. I'm, I'm not sure why, why work and contribute. I mean, honestly, it is, it's, it's starting to look just fine to kick back. Let's let, let's kick back and let everybody else do the work for us. I mean, why are we why are we busting our chops every day? Let's just I mean, let's stop swimming against the flow, Chip. Let's just let's just let it, let's just let the let the society take us down river. Mm -hmm. Honestly, the there's been a study done that you have to make over uh, I think forty five thousand. A couple makes more than four, less than forty five thousand dollars a year. They're better off just not working, and getting on this distance. Wow. Well, and that would be me. Yeah, you'd be better off for sure. I may need to look into that. I'm heavily considering it right now, rather than talking on the radio. Well, let's, let's, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to run to a break. When we come back, we are going to hit the first story that is just, it can't be true, even though it's reported by the Roanoke Times, about the woman injured over the weekend uh, riding a, a jet ski. Impossible. Impossible. We'll tell you why right here when we return. Don't go away. You're listening to the News Guardians on Fox Radio 910. This is Adrian Cronauer, the guy Robin Williams played on the movie Good Morning Vietnam. I just want you to know I always tune in to the News Guardian right here on Fox Radio 910. News Guardians on Fox Radio 910. And we are back. Did you know your our signal is potent? Potent? Yes, according to the trailer there, we're potent. Wow. And all this time I thought it was potentate. <laughs> or impotent. Impotent? No. We're impotent? <laughs> Very impotent. <laughs> Not to, no, wh wh where did that come from? I don't know. I just It just came to me in a dream. All right. The first, uh, the first fact reported in the news today Can't be, that, possibly be true. <clears throat> that can't be true comes from the Roanoke Times. Woman injured while riding personal watercraft on Smith Mountain Lake is the headline. No way. <clears throat> Let me read this uh, story. It's written by Melissa Powell. 
A 34-year-old Maryland woman broke her leg Friday morning after being thrown from a personal watercraft in the Gills Creek area of Smith Mountain Lake. Carl Martin, a district supervisor with the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, said the incident happened about 9 a.m. in Franklin County. The woman, whose identity is not being released at this time, hit a large wave and was thrown from the personal watercraft. Okay. No way. It can't happen. It can't happen. And I'll tell you why it can't happen. It can't happen because we instituted licensing. You cannot drive a personal watercraft or a boat without a license now unless you're over the age of 60. And the purpose of that was was to was safety it was to stop injuries and accidents and to make the make everything safer so this could not have happened because we got the licensing that they promised was going to end this kind of stuff right because obviously having a license would you you wouldn't you know not to go through a giant wake yeah, on your personal part watercraft. of the training that you go through to get the license is safety training i mean they and they there's so this is this can't happen it's it, this is impossible and I think that the Roanoke Times needs to do an investigation, and they need to find out why Carl Martin, the district supervisor with the Virginia Department of Game and Inland Fisheries, is lying to us. Because there, there's a lie being told here. Either the lie is that we're all going to be safe if we, if we force everybody to get licenses, or the lie is that, that, that this happened. But there's uh, a lie out there. Now I can make the argument, Greg, being the voice of reason that I often have to be on the show. Oh, boy. That while... Uh, licensing and safety training don't eliminate accidents. They could reduce the number of accidents. It could be. I mean, I'm not saying it's true, but you could make that argument. I don't like that. <laughs> no. Adrian doesn't like that either. No. No. Well, here's the here and and you could make the argument. I have though. a part. You you could make the argument, but I've been I've been driving boats on that lake since I was like nine years old. I don't not anymore because I don't have a license. We still have a boat. Uh, <laughs> but we can't we can't go on the lake with it. Um, you know how many accidents I've had in uh, in 35 years? I'm gonna guess zero. Yep. You know how many people that we've helped while out on the lake that were that were ha either had an accident or were distressed in some way? I'm gonna say more than one. Yeah, more than one. But it's so important that the government have control of, over another piece of of our lives. That um, plus it's a revenue stream, Greg. They don't charge enough to even cover the training stuff. Really? And here, and 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 the whole thing is a joke anyway. Because if if you if you rent a boat, they give you like a thirty minute like you know. Yeah. They no, it's not even thirty. It's like twelve. They show you a twelve minute video, and then you get a license that's good until your rental is over with. Yeah. So this is this. It's not about the money. This is not about the money. It's not about safety. It's about control. Because if it were about the money, they'd actually charge more for it. If it were about safety, then they wouldn't let you get a temporary license with 12 minutes of, of watching a movie. <laughs> so what's left? Control. So, story number one. Can't there's a true. lie there somewhere. And it's on one side or the other, but there's definitely a lie involved, uh, involved in that one. Was, um, is there another lie out there, Greg? Can't, I can't believe there's lies in the media. That's such so shocking to me. Um, yeah, let's just, 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 just do this one. Uh, let's see. Where are you? There it is. The headline, Captain Phillips strikes back off Horn of Africa. Pirates go bye-bye. Impossible. Why is that impossible? There's a, well, let me read here. It says, Somali pirates in 2011 attacked 237 boats in the oceans uh, around northeast Africa. In 2014, there have been seven attacks. All failed. Three years ago, Issy Eula's pirate gang hijacked a yacht being sailed around the world by a Danish family with three teens. The Danes were eventually fire, freed for a ransom of $3 million. Mr. Eula went to sea again. This is the pirate. This time he returned to his beachfront base in northern Somalia with a Liberian, Liberian, okay, a Liberian <laughs> flag. <laughs> That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Flagged oil tanker. Um, and 48 crew members in tow. After 10 months of negotiations and $12 million, they handed him over and everybody was released. But despite being one of Somalia's most feared and wealthiest gang leaders, Eula announced in May that he had to renounce piracy and would, and would tell his fellow comrades to, uh, to leave the dirty business as well. Now, what they're claiming here, what they're claiming here is that 
is that uh, uh, putting security forces in place to stop the pirating, like men with guns and weapons, stopped the violence. No way. I saw Captain Phillips not too long ago, the movie about the Somali pirates. and Those water cannons were pretty effective, weren't they? Oh, yeah. yeah nothing like a water cannon to... Versus, uh, you know... Water cannons uh, work better against students protesting. Um, versus pirates with guns. I would think it's a, a gun would be a better, you know, a couple of, you know, honestly, a couple of mounted fifty caliber machine guns would probably all you really need to keep uh, the pirates at bay. Well, and, and this story goes on to talk about the security forces that are now in place to protect to protect boats. You know, they've got, like, uh, security. You can have armed security on your boat. Um, so if the pirates show up, you know, they, they, they defend the boat, they kill the pirates, the, the whole thing's a failure, and the boat and the crew are protected, which can't be true. Because we have been told over and over, every single day, by, by the mainstream of our society, that guns create violence, guns cause violence. It is impossible that in this case that guns stopped violence. So either this story's a lie... And this is still going on, or it's a lie that guns can prevent violence. Well, which is it? Well, it's obvious what it is because you know, I'm, I'm, the, we talked about this. I think on Friday, the, the, and we talked about it a couple times. The fact that President, one of the many things President Obama has been given lots of money to do, but hasn't done, is finish the fence along the border. And they keep saying, "Well, a fence isn't going to work." Well, it works around the White House. And, and last I checked, they have a fence and they have uh, armed guards. And it's hard to get into the White House. And the Maybe it's not hard to get into the White House. Maybe maybe he's right. Maybe the fences don't do it. Maybe we could just walk right into the White House. Maybe. But I, I think you probably would likely end up face down on the ground with three so ser Secret Service agents with their knee in your back and a gun to your head. Well, they've got. See, I'll bet. I'll bet there is a violence and attacks out the yin yang around the White House because of the fences and the guns, and they're just not reporting it oh. because those guns being there, those armed guards, the Secret Service being armed at that house is obviously causing violence. It's, and it's the root of all the violence in, in D.C., I'm sure. So I, this is so confusing. It is so confusing to try to pay attention and listen to what I'm being told and make well, sense of it all. Because Well, here's another story that's kind of, we talked about this, I think, on Friday. But just, you know, if you go to Mexico and you cross the border illegally, what's likely to happen to you? What happened to that Marine? That's uh, sitting they popped him and threw him in jail. They're going to prosecute him. So how likely are you to? Because you know enforcement can't work. Yet when they enforce their border laws in Mexico, no one seems to want to cross the Mexican border illegally that way. But when we don't enforce the laws, people seem to come across at willy nilly. Shocking how that kind of works. Um, oh God, but I'm told all the time that there's no way to enforce a border. It's obviously, then obviously something's wrong. Either we are enforcing our border, or Mexico's not enforced. Maybe that maybe that Marine's not really in jail, and maybe people pour over the Mexican border into Mexico to escape to escape America all the time, and we're just not told about it. Oh, okay. There's something going on here because obviously what we're being told doesn't jive. I mean, regardless of what reality you want to believe, if you just take the messages that we are being given, they don't jive with each other. You can't just say everything and anything and then expect people to not be confused at some point. Because, frankly, this has got to be confusing. Do the fen defenses work or not? Do guns cause violence or not? You can't have it both ways. Well, when you have a society that, you know quotes Harry Potter books over the Bible when you have a society that you know glorifies Lindsay Lohan's of the, and the Kim Kardashians of the world makes them into celebrities is it any wonder why people are confused I guess not I mean, and, you, and honestly the, the the today the most calming and and satisfying piece of information that I got from the mainstream media was that Snooky has lost weight and is no longer Snooky. And she has a blog about it. And, yes. I, obviously, all is right with the world. Yes, because she's... I mean, it, it's... We live in a society where at least... Well, 
honestly. I mean, you don't have to dig too deep. You live in a society where if you believe the election results, 51% of the population voted for a president who would violated the Constitution repeatedly for four years. And if it wasn't 51%, it's still a large percentage of the population thinks well, President Obama is just spiffy. I don't think at this point, he, he said the other day he didn't care what they thought. He wasn't up for election anymore. Now, oh, he's not up for election anymore. Now he can just be honest. Yes, he can. So he was lying to you before. <laughs> he said he wasn't going to lie to us. He was going to be a new kind of politician. To usher a new day of politics. Which one of those is a lie? He, see, you, everything's a lie. <laughs> everything you, is a lie. Exactly. It's, it's always just very re reassuring on your day to day. Uh, when we come back, we'll talk about uh, Obama's border visit, which obviously that can't be true either. And still to come, we're going to tell you the seven craziest things you can really buy with food stamps. No joke. When we return to News Guardians on Fox Radio 910. is News Guardians. News Guardians. I love your show, man. It's great. We just need to talk about it. On WFJX Fox Radio 910. <laughs> So she says we just need to talk about it. My new mantra is, no, we need to fight about it. That's new. <laughs> it's not really new. You've been, you've been itching for a fight since I met you, so. No, I want to fight back. I know. That's the point. I'm, I'm tired of I'm tired of being hit in the face and then talking and then being chopped off at the legs and then talking and then having a knife stabbed in my back and then talking. I'm ready to fight back, people. Come on, let's fight back. Back. We didn't start this, but we can sure finish it. Okay. So in keeping with the theme of today. <laughs> the theme of today was being lied to you, not, <laughs> not starting a war. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, we didn't start the war. Or finishing the war. the war. How's that? The war is already going on, uh, and they're already oh, waging gosh. it against us. I'm so sorry I said it now. It was, uh, so carrying on with the theme of the show... <laughs> So, um, Reuters and Yahoo News report on Obama's border visit. Oh, he went to the border. That's fantastic. Um, and he needed to go to the border to get a firsthand vision of what's really going on there. Um, well, actually, I don't think he did. Um, they show this picture of him giving a press conference with all of these Latinos behind him and the American flag, supposedly at the border. But, but. Uh, as this story tells us, that's not actually true. The, the, the headline, if the news is bad, then invent better news. Despite the admonitions which came from politicians, media figures, and wonks on every side of the aisle, President Obama did not visit the border. He played pool, had a beer, turned down some weed, met with Rick Perry, but he did not go to the scene of the crisis that he manufactured. There was just too much donor cash at stake. And as the president claims, he doesn't like photo ops. So once again, no border visit took place. Unless... Unless you you uh, subscribe to Reuters News Service or read Yahoo News. Because those two outlets reported that a border visit did happen. And they even have a picture to prove it. Here's the first border visit from a group of photos. Uh, oh, okay, I see. We're going to have to post this on the website so that the, so people can see the uh, can get the photos. But they've got a picture of his border visit um, posted on there. It says, unfortunately, the picture was from a stop in Denver, Colorado. Not from when he supposedly went to the actual border of maybe he was at the maybe he was at the border of Colorado and Wyoming. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say what border. President Obama has borrowed the power to rearrange the geographical locations of the states. Uh, these pictures are great. Like this one, it says you can see him uh, him descending the steps of Air Force One, eager eager to tackle the the fight at the border. Except nope, he's in Austin. He's not at the border. He's in Austin, Texas. Um, this is just this is just classic. So, what's the deal? Uh, they're lying for the president they love, like they've been doing for five and a half, six years. Duh. So, I mean, you know, it's like the media would lie for President Obama. I mean, there's there's been some. We talked about this Friday. There's been. 
uh, 38 news organizations finally complained that the president was uh, not being transparent five and a half years in, and they, we're going to have to fight back against that. I, I see how hard they're fighting there, the Reuters people, by you know covering for the president's lack of action on the border issue. For real. And... and I had the opportunity to to break this out for someone. Um, do you know who uh, Candace Salima is? Uh, no. She uh, was an uh, aide to a congressman out in, um, where is this, in Utah. And she posted a picture on online um, showing uh, illegals being unloaded from a plane and stuck into a bus. Now, where are they flying these illegals from to put them on a bus that they couldn't have just put them on a bus in the beginning? Well, and they're not checking. The TSA isn't checking any of those people with any of the. They're not going through the TSA screening procedures when they stick them on the airplane. Are they either. flying them into the country now? Is this how we're illegally getting them across the border? We're going to fly them into the United States and then stick them on a My bus. My understanding and- is they're taking. They're flying them once they cross the border. My understanding, but who knows? Who knows what they're doing down there? Because it's all a scam. Well, and this little this picture and and Candace's uh, post started what's now like a fifty comment thread under this picture, and I caught this this morning, like way down in the middle. After some somebody said named Jim Davis said, the truth is that the Obama administration has provided stricter border enforcement than any previous administration and deported <laughs> more who have illegally crossed. The question to be asked is why is the House of Representatives debating and passing immigration limits legislation? So I posted the story for Mr. Davis of uh, of Obama's border visit. Um, uh, I said, Mr. Davis, I doubt that you have any way to know what you've just asserted. Where's the actual evidence? Have you seen these stricter borders and more deportations for yourself? Or are you relying on someone else to tell you that they have? So you have a government, okay, you have a government that lies about their economic data like unemployment or inflation. They lie. So why would they not lie about the border stuff? But just you can, there's a a significant percentage of the population, somewhere between 40 and 60 percent, that if the government says it, it's true, Greg. They're not questioning it, especially those. I mean, President Obama, he's trying his best. He really cares about you. I mean, have you heard him give a speech, Greg? He really cares about you. And he cares about me. And he wouldn't lie. He gave me hope. He gave me hope, Greg. Really? Well, we did get some change. Yes. I mean, things have... A few things have changed. You know how hard it is to be the president? He's doing his best. I mean, he's trying to clear up the mess George Bush left behind. Don't you know? <sighs> I don't remember Ronald Reagan ever complaining about having to clean up the mess that Jimmy, that Jimmy Carter left him. Do you, do you recall the press conference where Ronald Reagan said, I'm sorry that uh, that everything's even worse now? I don't recall. Um, ever, yeah, I don't, Because, yeah. Uh, you know, Carter left me a bigger mess than I thought he left me. I don't recall him giving a press conference where he talked about himself, I think, 199 times in the first person. Me, I, me, I, 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 me, I, I, me, I. And then said... Well, I got to get stuff done, so I'll just sign it in the order. I don't remember Reagan ever saying that. I think Reagan said something to the effect of, it would be amazing how much things you can get done if you, if you don't worry about who gets credit for it. Now, Obama was saying, I, me, 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 I, 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 me, me, I, 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 me, I, 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 me, I, I, me. I love me. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just listening to one of his speeches now. You, it doesn't take a it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that we're in deep doo doo. Well, a few things do take rocket scientists, but not this. No, no. Um, on a different subject, uh, have you heard the latest on the IRS targeting of uh, conservative political groups? Have you heard the latest? Did you hear about this, Larry? Do you know about this? Uh, Remind me. Well, um, um, this just uh, this just popped up, but it says um, in this story that I that I found this morning that um, the IRS uh, has said that they will no longer look into whether or not any group who uh, is asking for a nonprofit status um, is actually committing any illegal illegal activity. Now, what they're doing here is they're just going to stop. They're just going to stop looking into all 
nonprofits of that type. Oh, okay. They're, it's, it's not actually it's not actually that they've admitted wrongdoing and they're going to stop investigating just the political enemies of the president. They're pretending they they're they're acting like a kindergartner. And they're saying, well, if you're going to criticize us, then we're just not going to investigate anybody. As if they were investigating everybody to begin with. No, they were only investigating the president's political enemies. They weren't investigating everybody who they had a reasonable suspicion of wrongdoing. They were investigating just the people they wanted to destroy on behalf of the president. So, I mean, this is good news in a sense because I don't want them investigating at all, to be quite honest. So we at least got that done, but not because, not because they've admitted the truth. Not because the, 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 the wrongdoing has finally been copped to by them. It's because they're acting like a belligerent kindergartner. Well, true. But have you ever worked with a nonprofit before, like a po- nonprofit political group? Yeah. I mean, it's, they're, they're, they're paranoid about what they can or can't say. Oh, yeah. Can't Overly can't paranoid. Do. Overly paranoid. I mean, the, the ones that we have come in contact with and have, and have done anything with over the last four or five years... Uh, they they have they've basically behaved in a manner so as not to even come close to anything that could possibly be construed as illegal because they're scared to death of the IRS thugs. Yep. Even before all this was going on, while all this was going on, and now after all this has gone on, so I, I'm I'm not sure where this abuse that they're talking about having to investigate is supposed to have come from. Well, I know where. Yeah, the president's is. people are the ones that do it. It's 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 his political groups that actually break the law, register people to vote that that aren't eligible to vote, take money and spend it on things you're not allowed to spend money on. It's not it's it's not the people they targeted. Greg, you don't understand. You're on the wrong side of the double standard, and the people on the right side of the double standard don't want you to lose the double standard. No, and they've got the guns. Yes, the people on the right side of the double standard are the ones that have the armored personnel carriers in your towns. They're the ones with the machine guns. They're the ones with the flashbangs. They're the ones with the body armor. They're the ones with the riot gear. The ones on the right side of the double standard. Well, they also have uh, new bullets that uh, look are little heat-seeking bullets that'll like find you and hit you 100% of the time. Really? Yeah. Fantastic. So. Gotta love that. Um, it's time for a break. Yeah, oh, happy note. We're just we're just full of cheer and happiness today, Greg. Right? <laughs> oh, then you're gonna love the next story. The headline: Why did you shoot me? I was reading a book. <laughs> the new warrior cop is out of control. We'll talk. And about don't forget about the seven the seven things you can buy with your food oh, stamps. Oh yes, the seven things you won't believe you can buy with food stamps. All that when we return to News Guardians on Fox Radio nine ten. News Guardians on Fox Radio nine ten. So with so many claiming that uh, we just don't have anything rising to the level of impeachment, uh, Lieutenant General uh, Boykin said that the veteran scandal and Benghazi are absolutely grounds for impeachment and has has a video where he talks and explains that very thing from Jerry Boykin. If you don't know who Jerry is, he was the guy that saved all of those Americans that were that were held hostage at the medical school down in um, old uh, the little island back in the eighties. What was that place? Oh, the one that was they kind of made a movie out of Harper Ridge. Yeah, yeah. Um, it wasn't Reagan sent him. Very fictionalized version of that, but well, it was. But Boykin was the guy who who. In fact, not only did he command that um, uh, command was the commander of that operation successfully eliminated the threat, saved the Americans. He also took a 50 caliber to the arm and almost lost his arm. It took him a year of, of, of surgeries and, and uh, uh, physical therapy so that he could use his arm again. And what did he do? He came back and then President Clinton sent him to Somalia to get shot up by a terrorist in Somalia. Thanks a lot, Bill. Thanks a lot, Bill. Anyway, even he thinks that we've got enough. It's funny how there's so many people talking about how, you know, this and this and this are absolutely legitimate reasons for impeachment. And they're not all talking about the exact same things. Everybody has, you know, there's some that are similar, 
in common, but everybody's got a whole bunch of things that actually would rise to the level of, of having impeachment hearings. It was Grenada, by the way. Grenada, thank you very much. In Grenada. Um, so we promised when you came back to tell you about uh, the story behind the headline, Why Did You Shoot Me? I Was Reading a Book. Uh, you may not have heard about this story, but um, this, is, this happened right here in Virginia, by the way. It says, Sal Colosi is dead because he bet on a football game. But it wasn't a bookie or a loan shark who killed him. It was his local government, ostensibly to protect him from a gambling habit. Several months earlier at a local bar in Fairfax, Virginia, Detective David Balcom overheard the 38-year-old optometrist and some friends wagering on a football game. $50, by the way. On, a, te on a tech game. Yeah. Okay. Yep. And uh, Sal said that betting on on Redskins and tech games was was just fun and a stress reliever amongst friends. Um, but Officer Balcom apparently thought that this was a crime worthy of investigation. So after he overheard them wagering, he decided to make friends with uh, Kulosi as a cover to begin investigating him. And then during the next several months, he he. He manipulated him into raising the stakes of the bets until finally he himself made a $2,000 bet with the optometrist in a single game, which now, because of the amount, uh, under Virginia law, that's enough for the police to actually charge him with running a gambling operation. It doesn't matter that he's not running a gambling operation. If you and a friend make a bet of $2,000 or more, and you're the one, I guess, who, who, who technically makes the bet, then under the law, you're running a gambling operation. Even if you're betting the same person, it's singular, and, and it just happens to have been that amount. At any rate, the optometrist lost the bet, and on the night of January 24th, Balcom called the, the optometrist, Colosi, and arranged a time to drop by and collect his $2,000. So when he arrives, Colosi, barefoot, wearing a T-shirt, steps out of his house to meet the man he thought was his friend, and a SWAT team moved in. Seconds later, Detective Deval Bullock, who had been on duty since 4 a.m., hadn't slept for 17 hours, fired a bullet straight through Colosi's heart. His last words, the, the, the optometrist, his last words to Balcom, the cop he thought was his friend, was, dude, what are you doing? Hmm. Teach you to play football games or, or sports. Well, his gambling habit won't destroy his life anymore. True. Now, the Colossis sued. They sued Fairfax County over this and actually won the lawsuit in court. It got a $2 million settlement. Now, Virginia, the same, the same the time this is going on, spent $20 million promoting gambling under the state lottery, which is okay. Okay. But we're going to shoot him. For illegally gambling. For illegally gambling with a cop. Who manipulated him into it? Well, your bookie doesn't have public service announcements talking about how bad gambling is. Because the lottery does that. Now, you may be thinking, well, his family deserves to win that lawsuit. And, you know, it's good they won. They got a $2 million settlement. But that cop did not pay the $2 million. You know who paid the $2 million? You did. We did. Exactly. When these government officials that we that we do have not given consent to behave in this manner get get in trouble for it and actually and actually are brought to task, we end up being the ones that have to pay their bill for their bad behavior, not them. That's got to change. And we're gonna. That's in fact that's gonna be something we're gonna talk about ongoing because that's a big problem and an ever increasingly big problem right here in Virginia. Uh, but we promised you, and we've only got two minutes left, we promised you to tell you about <laughs> the seven most ridiculous things you can buy with food stamps. Are you, are you, are you believing this? Uh, I believe anything these days. So go ahead and go, we'll share with peeps. All right. Well, let's, uh, let's start with the first one here. Um, number one, bail. Convicted wow. felons like drug dealer Kimball Clark have reportedly used their EBT as bail money. 
That's, that's, that's they instructed someone to flexible. go to an ATM, withdraw the money for cash, and bring it back to pay for their bail. That's good to know. Not bread, not milk, not eggs, not cheese, not fresh vegetables to feed your family. Bail. Now, this one, this one's great. Lingerie. Come on. Really? Yes. Yes. Kiss My Lingerie, an adult store in Louisiana, accepts EBT. That's helpful. <laughs> I mean, you never know. I mean, you know, you, you got to you gotta keep it fresh in the bedroom and, you know. Strip clubs. Oh, well, that's important. You got to, you know, how you got to have some Don't entertainment. Don't forget, the New York Post reported using FOIA requests to the, to the welfare department that they found recipients regularly making EBT withdrawals at ATMs inside famous porn shops, liquor stores, lounges, hookah parlors. Man does not live by bread alone, Greg. You got to have some entertainment. You're kidding me. <laughs> <laughs> Lobster. That's delicious. And as I'm a person... In high in protein. And as I'm a personal witness to crab legs, you can find that story on... In fact, I'll put this one up along with it. On newsguardians.com. Um, just go to the search and type in and type in um, food stamp fraud. And there are the pictures that I took at a food lion in Roanoke of someone frauding, frauding us... With, with their food stamps. Okay, number five, Starbucks. Oh, you know, you got to have some coffee to get your day started. Now, the corporate stores don't accept the EBT, but if you go to a Starbucks that's inside a grocery store, then you can buy a $7 mocha with your EBT card. That's, imp that's impressive because that's important. you got to be alert if you're going to figure out how to use your EBT card for stuff that's not like milk, egg, and bread. Number six, cold hard cash. Well, that's all. Cash is always good. And number seven, cupcakes and gourmet cakes. Hey, you know, you, you never know when you're going to need your cupcake fix. A $45 cake. Gourmet cake. Now, what's coming soon? You ready for this? Colorado became the first state to legalize the use of recreational marijuana, right? Mm-hmm. They also may become the first state to have taxpayer-funded pot smoking because a Colorado pot shop called Wright Greens has taken the steps to officially accept EBT. Your tax money at work. Wow. And just when you thought you couldn't believe anything... The News Guardians are here to tell you why. <laughs> and if you come back tomorrow, you'll get more. I think we're going to have Albert Ogen on tomorrow. We will. Uh, Chip will be here with Al tomorrow. Elizabeth and I will be here Wednesday. Until then, have a good one.